Online, I have Kevin Liddy, who has been named or added to the Alice Teen Ellen Memorial Plaque, sponsored by the Best of Books as the winner of the 2021 Wadadi Youth Pen Prize Challenge, along with his daughter. She's probably not online, but he will be speaking on behalf of both of them. Good afternoon, Kevin. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, how do you feel to have captured this this grand uh, prestigious award? I feel absolutely amazing. Um, it has been it's a it's a dream really. It's a dream come true. Okay, and 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 how um, were you encouraged, or why did you decide to enter? Well, the story with that is that I wasn't going to enter. The, my faith community that I attend, the Vibrant Faith Ministries, the, we had a workshop, and they enter every single year. And what happened was that I was helping the young boys at the workshop, and afterward, that um, the director, Margaret Irish, she said, I'm entering uh, some of you folks in the competition. <laughs> so I said, okay, and your name is in there. So I said, um, okay. So... When, she's, when she did that, I said, I have to come up with, what should I do? Because I normally do poetry. Um, people know me around the place for poetry. So I said, no, I want to do something different. So I wrote a short story called Mildred Yanezi, and that, that was a winning piece. Oh, congratulations. Mildred Yanezi. Talk to us about Mildred Yanezi. Okay, so Mildred Yuna Easy is basically a um, co compilation of thoughts, um, both fictional and realistic, that I just combined to make a short story. Basically, the main character, his name is John Mink, and John is taking a walk down the road to, to Fort James Beach, and in his possession is a crocus bag, a fishing rod and some pepper and fungi that his neighbor gave him. <laughs> so as John is walking down the road, um, he strikes up a conversation with his friend nemesis Mildred, and Mildred is basically taunting John about his life mm -hmm. and about um, his failed marriage because John is divorced and. In their conversation, John is getting really heated because Mildred never liked his wife. And so he's wondering why is she talking to him about her. And so she keeps, she keeps saying, okay, uh, um, what about your wife? What about your children? That kind of thing. And so John is saying, um, now he's talking dialect to her. He says, Manawa and talk about my wife, you diff. <laughs> and <laughs> and and so Mildred is answering him back, and they were having that conversation. But John is getting a little bit more heated now; he's getting more animated. So he began to um, cuss at her some bad words. And um, so the so people who live on Fort well that road coming down, I think it's Anchorage. I can't remember the name of the road coming down to the, the beach. They come out of their homes to watch what the commotion is all oh about. Oh my! <laughs> There's a big scene. That's how loud John was. And so when John reached the beach now, thinking he gets some, some peace of mind, he can now go and eat his fungi and pepper pot. In and peace. Fish. Um, Mildred not stopping. So Mildred continued to say, you are such a loser. See you know what John do? John take his hand and hit Mildred in the mouth. Oh, no. What? Yes. He took his hand and hit Mildred in the mouth. And then she said, you're such a loser. And he hit her again. The crowd come now because they're wondering what is going on. All they have seen is John on the sand hitting himself. Mm -hmm. now, there, there's some issues there with John internally. There's no Mildred. John has split personality. There's no, there's no Mildred? No. Oh, God. He's, he's on the sand hitting himself. Mm hmm okay so then there's mental health yes. issues so the issue what the one of the major themes of the story if you 
the, the whole synopsis of the whole thing is mental health. And many times you walk in the road, you see people homeless or deranged, wow. and you don't know their story. And you're thinking, oh, oh look at that crazy man going on the road. Mm-hmm. You don't know the journey that they went through. You don't know the, the what, what happened. And I think sometimes we judge people and we're thinking, and we have a little laugh or a little chuckle, mm-hmm. but we don't know the depth of tragedy that, that exists in their life. And so that story was to highlight one, just one of the things that can happen in somebody's life that can turn them over to the edge. I guess in my humble opinion, John couldn't deal with what happened. So yes. he had this alter ego or counter person that named Mildred, who was basically that person that was always teasing him about his failure. So maybe John couldn't deal with the failure of life and he had to now have a, a di- internal dialogue with an other, another ego mm-hmm. to speak about it. Wow. Um, wow, that was so impressive. Um, <laughs> I had to catch myself there to, to realize the whole essence of, of this this whole um, Mildred unit easy piece. How long did it take you to, to put this and where did the inspiration come from? I know you said based on um, things you have seen going on and especially um, with the advent of COVID-19, um, mental mm-hmm. health is a big thing. I've had... Uh, a few psychologists on my program I'm um, talking about how to cope and uh, the difference between stress and depression and um, the, the different mental health um, diseases for right. example um, you know this stress is stress depression is depression they break it down and um, schizophrenia and this uh, bipolar and stuff mm-hmm. like that so it is the I, I figure that when the judges or whoever adjudicated it, that piece, they must have saw it very fitting that you took into consideration or or understanding the climate in which we're living in and you put this so brilliant together. Um what became of um what's his name? The the, the, the main character. Well, that will be part two for next year. <laughs> you catch me good. <laughs> yeah. So you can give us a little piece or like an insight. Well, next year is called the window. The window, okay. The window, and that's wow. part two of John's continued story. And I actually thought about part two this morning mm-hmm. as I was making some notes, mental notes. Yeah. I said I'm going to call it the window. So I, I, I don't want to reveal it because I don't want to spoil it for the judges. But, yes, and you don't want um, no copying. <laughs> and that too. So it's called The Window. And you'll find out why it's called The Window next year. And hopefully it'll be another um, piece that the judges like again. But wow. my, my daughter now. Yes, we have to her. talk about your daughter. Mm-hmm. Right. So I have two children, and Angelique and Alasia. And Angelique started to enter the competition. Also, I can't say she's she's um, wasn't is known for writing. She's known for swimming. She's an avid swimmer in um, with the aquatic races. She so she swims um, competitively, and she's represented at OECS level once or twice. And so that's what people know her for. Mm-hmm. And she's also a very inward child, very quiet. <laughs> so people with such your daughter writes. Now when, as it once again, our faith community entered onto all the QG, they call them quality generation, which is the, what the, they call the children, the children of quality generation. Mm-hmm. So they wanted all the QGs or quality generation children to enter this competition. And so we had two workshops, the girls and the boys, I did the boys and the um, uh, Margaret Irish and uh, Sister Alexandra, they, she, they did the girls. And my daughter just sat down there and just thought about a poem in literally five minutes and began to write. And her poem, her piece was called The Beach. And the beach is about her experiences on the beach, mm-hmm. the joy of beach life, the drinking coconut water, um, basically different adventures. It, it, it ended 
with her going in the water, and I think there was a near drowning, and she was saved, and life was went on nice in jail. So, she, but she wrote that in literally a few minutes, literally, and I think, and then she had to do some revision and revision and so on. Mm -hmm. But um, the end, the end product was very, very good. Wow, and and you are you are so proud. <laughs> I'm so so proud I of know. my children. Yes, definitely. Okay. But um, there were many seasoned, um, established, and profound uh, writers or authors within the competition. So, to have walked away with the top prize, <laughs> how does that make you feel? Um, any plans in the future to to? Uh, Go further. Go further within this this field of writing. Well, I'll tell you a story. I've always wanted to write a book, but I always said, oh, I don't think I have it. I okay. As I said, I write a lot of poetry in the past. I'm inspired, not like a regular thing. So I said, do I venture into book writing now? Because I have a lot of thoughts in terms of how what this book is going to be about. And so I have some juicy stories that I want to tell, but <laughs> I'm wondering how can I take it to the next level? And so this, I think, is a catalyst or beginning or genesis of my writing career. I actually want to publish books. Mm -hmm. I mean, write books. And go for it because I'm that going is to. brilliant. I'm going to. Um, share with us like one of your favorite poems of all times. Well, one of my favorite poems, I would say, is Chance, uh, Chancer, and it's written in Old English. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't pronounce the words, but the words are funny. But um, I remember doing that in A-level with Mr. Holder, and um, I don't mean in the poem, but what captivated me was, this is a, like a, almost a foreign language, and I'm studying this thing at a advanced level i'm thinking how did they compose this how did um, the guy compose this and it was like pages and pages and pages of poetry mm -hmm. and i'm thinking oh goodness this is yeah and, a lot and, of thoughts and, and, and the rhyming scheme was so is on point you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that wasn't an inspiration for me definitely but um i like my poetry sometimes have a are more uh, in, in terms of realism, I like poems that are realistic. Not necessarily have to have a good ending. Um, I just like the reality of it. But uh, but in terms of reading, I'm, I'm an avid reader. I love books. I love documentaries and that kind of thing. Okay, okay. So so there are definitely plans to to write a yes. book. But you have you given any thought? of what you were crafted or, th or sent it around. I already have the title of my book as, as well. You already have the title? Mm-hmm. I have the title, I have the outline. Okay. So I've had that before the competition because I was dreaming. I said, if I write a book, what am I going to write the book about? Mm -hmm. And what, what would make it sell? So the book basically is... Uh, a compilation, or not compilation, it's a two-part book. It's telling the perspective of a man who is lost in his world, in his world of idealism, and he's, um, he's basically coming from a place of abuse. Mm -hmm. He was abused when he was younger. He was um, basically grew up into being a narcissist. But people don't know that. So I'll, write, so I'll write about him in that perspective. And the other part of the book is, uh, I think I, I was thinking, should I marry him? With, with, and tell the, the book from his wife's perspective and what she went through wow. on being with him, married to him. That's, that's so brilliant. I can either make them divorced or make them together. I'm not. I haven't thought about that. Let, let, yet. Let's make them be together. <laughs> we want a happy ending. Now, well, happy endings. Yes, happy endings are nice. So, so there probably will be a conclusion where we um, but it could be a a snapshot of both of their lives and their and the male perspective and the female perspective. That's one thought. The other thought I wanted to write about was 
um, basically life in the eyes of a sex worker mm. who was human trafficked. Wow. Now that's the um, Miss Lydia, I must stop you right here. That's the, the seller one there. Not the one before this one. <laughs> Which one? The the human trafficking one because oh, like it is one? very prevalent and mm -hmm. we need to open the eyes and bring awareness to this very critical um, situation that's happening um, here in Antigua. Uh, uh, I do a lot of research on it and, and, and years and years and years ago, I remember when we had, because um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a pastor and we were doing a prayer walk in St. John's. Yes. And we came across a particular place mm -hmm. and it was about five, it was a men's prayer walk, it was about five or six guys. And we were just walking, this was like 10 o'clock at night and, we were, and the proprietor of the place come and said, we're not open for next couple of minutes. So I said, wow. what's she talking about? What's she talking about? Wow. And the person, the proprietor, pointed out to the police and said, um, there. Because they thought we were coming to watch yes, the, yes, the yes. strip club. Yes, yes. And, um, and we went right there on this street. We held hands and we just prayed. Because I Mr. Knew, Lady, did you all go in? No, we didn't go in. <laughs> I would see the car police for now, right? <laughs> because when we start praying, the woman, the, the proprietor start a cussing. <laughs> wow. But that's when I knew, that's when I knew that there was a, there's a uh, pervasive problem in Antigua. So it's not a propaganda, regard. it's a reality. It's a reality. Mm -hmm. And I personally, in traveling abroad, because I've lived abroad for a few years, I've met people who were victims of sex trafficking mm -hmm. and heard some of their stories and it's like modern day slavery you, it's yes it is it is a well, form yeah. of modern day slavery yes of course mm -hmm. so i think we'll think the book what one of the books will be about mm -hmm. um a character who went through that journey beautiful e either way i think they will be bestsellers and i think you should go for it um what has the response or the feedback been like um from persons reading your piece okay so people love the piece i think this the end patch shocked them because they weren't expecting that part because they're not thinking that john and mildred is the same person nobody i think that's probably why i won <laughs> Nobody saw that coming until so the you, last. So you basically sentence. took the, the 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 readers on a very high journey, and then they just dropped down off the hill. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. they going exactly. up, up, <laughs> up. Because you did you did me that. I don't know about the viewers and the listeners. I was like, wait, the same person. Oh, mm -hmm. you have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People didn't see that coming. Especially when I said, what, what is it? Why is he writing about a man hitting a woman? Yes, that too. <laughs> you didn't hear me say what? I heard you. <laughs> Kevin, so, I see why you won. I see why you yes, won. Yes. So I think the twist, I think the twist at the end. The plot and twist. The, script, the plot yes. twist and descriptive language of the humor in terms of John Fungi and so on. And how he, oh, yes. Looking forward to eating Tying it into so. our um, our local uh, lifestyle, the way we mm -hmm. eat and stuff. Mm -hmm. Going, taking a little walk down the beach with our Fungi. Because I'm asking you, um, so he got to eat the Fungi in peace? <laughs> he didn't get to eat no. the Fungi in peace because, remember, he was on the ground hitting himself. And then everybody watching the, the show. Everybody watch the show, but the rain started to come. This is the end part of the story in the, in the, in the, in the script. The rain started to come in, and they left him alone in the rain. Oh, hitting, no. Um, hitting himself. Because, you know, <laughs> just, let's be real. In Antigua, when we see people talking to themselves, and so we don't we, go to them. We yeah. tend to stay away. No, you see, now that's a little problem there. Because um, someone with mental health issues, uh, they're not in the right frame of mind. Mm -hmm. So if you were to be the Good Samaritan, you, you just might put yourself in danger. You know, I've seen it happen a lot. Um, yeah. Where you're reaching out to uh, lend some sort of assistance and it ends the wrong way. You have to reach out because 
but you don't know what you could do. I'm not saying I want you to go and embrace down because you don't know the level, what exactly is wrong. Mm-hmm. But there's something you can do. You can, you can also, I remember years ago, I lived near Sister Fritz, and I used to feed homeless people in Antigua. This is like 15, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And some of these folks that we fed every Friday were deranged and maybe 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 skits so who knows they were they had mental illness but it was a joy feeding them it was a joy seeing them come for their food every friday at about one or two o'clock yes. and that would that for me was really fulfilling because sometimes we we tend to be so individualistic in our society that we forget people Mm-hmm. We forget that people are really struggling, especially since COVID. Especially COVID now. COVID had shown me yes. the struggle of people. Yes, yes. It's so real. So People so, are literally starving out there. And yes. you'll be, and, and I'm not hungry, starving. They have no food at all. Wow. Um, so you mentioned that you did the, this program uh, 15, 20 years ago. Um, with 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 all what's happening now, any plans mm-hmm. to restart that program? No, I I've been doing this program for no. I'm talking about that with the homeless. I do feeding programs on a on a personal level. Okay. Um, for years and years now, on a church level for years and years now, I've been doing that for a long time. Okay, brilliant. brilliant. So I think that's why, in terms of vivid character and seen people and seen the reality of people i have a lot of character reference i can write good yes. stories from I that i mean in my for. stories was that i mean and for yeah. i never knew within me that i could win a competition i just never thought about it mm-hmm. what's yeah. what you what was your prize i got lot i put it on my facebook post i got lots of lots of lots of books I got a, don- a cash donation from Frank B. Armstrong. So I want to thank him so much. Mm-hmm. I got my um, book prize from Best of Books. Thank them so much. And I got a um, there's a company in Trinidad. I can't remember the name of it, but I'm going to be trained in writing skills. Wow. Yes. I'm looking forward to that one. That's going to be awesome. I can't remember the fellowship. It's a fellowship in Trinidad. This is a really um good um, um challenge put on by Wadadley Pen Pal. I have to hey, I have to come up against you. Amazing, <laughs> come up against the next year. So the lady, I have to come up against you next year. <laughs> I look forward to the challenge. And look what you do, you don't give me all your ideas. No, me I'm not an idea. Trust me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Mister Lady. But we want to thank John Hill House and Barbara, Barbara Arundale, Arundale. Best of books, they are best amazing, of books amazing and people. everybody involved, and all yes. the other competitors. Yeah, and the competitors as well. The yeah. person who got second place, mm-hmm. um, she her story was amazing as well. So yeah, the stories are great. Yes, yes, yes. And I want to shout out to my little friend Unique. Unique had a story called, I think it's the Black Boy. She read it to in the in the competition, and she just blew all everybody away. Like yes, because I'm skills. I'm seeing and your daughter Angelique with the beach, and um, you know of course your story took the first place, and then there's Jason Gillian whose mm-hmm. story Jason, yes, the he great won the special category the great old wood slave, and then there's Shanika Greaves. Yes. And, and and so forth and all these wonderful people don't want to call names and get in trouble but all the writers who took part congratulations winning doesn't necessarily always mean that you won the top prize to <coughs> have actually participated to have actually penned and yeah. be involved in something as meaningful as that as writing and sharing your thoughts that is winning in itself Definitely. Yes. Any final words, uh, Mr. Lee? I want to encourage the general public to read. I was at Best of Books today getting my selection. And the, what I wanted to get in terms of prizes, I want to get local books written by local authors. And so most of the books I got, I chose, were by local authors. And it's, and I, I, I was telling somebody, it's such a great idea to to instead of us buying um, 
frivolous things. Go and buy a book by a local author once a month or once every quarter for your child or for yourself. Mm-hmm. It makes a massive difference, not only to the author, but for you know, supporting the bookstores as well as um, our local talent. Right. So I'm encouraging everybody, everybody to, to read, get involved read, and read, read, broaden read, your read, horizons. Read. And so join me next year in the competition. <laughs> you know, I just say joking with you, right? Yeah, you joking? I thought you no, you no. From That's from like the part to That's like they forced me to end you end it. Look here, this is you, you. You tell me the window, yeah, the the window already s- already sound like the winning piece already. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm backing out now. <laughs> no, you can't back out. Yeah, you may have a you your 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 stomach may be on the door and your door will be my window. You see, you see that? Okay. Well no, um, you just never know. We never know, we never know. But Kevin, um we can I want to invite you back on another time to, to speak about you know, aside from this conversation, you are into the insurance um business. I am, yes. And the, the importance of life insurance and so forth. We, we should talk about that. Looking forward to it. Okay. And um, all the very best. And once again, congratulations to you and Anjali. Is that her name? Anjali? That's her name. Anjali. Yes. Anjali. And she's listening? She's listening, yes. Hello, Anjali. Congratulations. And all Thank the very so best much. in the future. God bless. Thank you. Okay.